This training module will introduce the topic of respirators. It will focus on the need for respirators, the types of respirators available, the proper use of respirators, and proper treatment of respirators, including washing and storage. By the end of this module, you should be able to explain what a respirator is, list two main types of respirators, explain how to select the respirator to use at a particular job site, explain the type of protection each type of respirator provides, state who certifies respirators for use, explain what an APF is, list some considerations for proper respirator fit, explain how to wash and sanitize a respirator, explain how to store a respirator. A respirator is a piece of personal protective equipment that guards the wearer against hazards in the air. There are many types of respirators. Each type protects its user from a specific airborne hazard. A respirator may protect against one hazard very well, but give little or no protection against another type of hazard. For example, some respirators protect the user from particles floating in the air. Others offer protection from airborne chemicals in environments with little or no oxygen, and still others offer protection in both environments. It's important to understand the purpose for which a respirator is designed and to know the limits of the respirator before using it on the job. The purpose of a respirator is to provide you with safe air to breathe when working in environments with insufficient oxygen, harmful airborne particles or dust, hazardous fumes, vapors, gases, or smoke. Your employer must identify the hazards you will be facing on the job and provide you with respirators that will protect you from those hazards. There are two main types of respirators air purifying and air supplying. Air purifying respirators remove contaminants from the air the user breathes by passing the air through a filter before the user inhales it. Air supplying respirators provide the user with clean air from another source. Respirators are also classified by how tightly they fit. Loose fitting respirators are hoods or helmets that cover the head completely. Tight-fitting respirators fit tightly around all or part of the face, creating a seal between the air you breathe and the air that surrounds you. Tight-fitting respirators are further classified by how much of the face they cover. Typical sizes include quarter masks, half masks, and full masks. Tight-fitting respirators are also classified by the air pressure inside their face mask. A negative pressure respirator maintains a lower pressure inside the face mask than the pressure outside the mask. All respirators that cause air to move through filters and into your lungs are negative pressure respirators. A positive pressure respirator maintains a higher air pressure inside the face mask than the pressure outside the mask. If a positive pressure respirator fits properly, it is difficult for contaminated air to enter the mask because of the pressure pushing out. Respirators should be used only as a last line of defense against atmospheric hazards in the workplace. Employers should always first attempt to remove or control any airborne hazard through engineering or work practice control measures. An example of an engineering control is the use of ventilation systems in the workplace to remove particulates from the air. An example of a work practice control is limiting the amount of time a miner works in an area that has airborne hazards. When airborne hazards cannot be controlled through engineering or work practice controls, workers should wear a respirator. Employers should explain to their workers when it is necessary to use a respirator on the job. Air purifying respirators work by filtering out contaminants as air passes through a filter or removal element. The filter or removal element is usually designed to protect against a specific type of hazard. Some air purifying respirators remove particulates, such as dust, from the air. Others absorb chemicals from the air. Air purifying respirators include two main parts, a face piece and a filter. 
Because air purifying respirators function only by removing contaminants from air, they do not protect the user in situations when the air does not have enough oxygen. As a general rule, air purifying respirators are used for less hazardous atmospheric conditions than are air supplying respirators. Four types of air purifying respirators are single-use disposable respirators, half and quarter masks respirators, full mask respirators, power air purifying respirators. An example of a single-use disposable air purifying respirator is a disposable dust mask. Single-use air purifying respirators provide only minimal levels of protection from atmospheric hazards. They provide no gas or vapor protection. Use these respirators only for protection against nuisance dust and dispose of them after one use. Air purifying half mask respirators cover the nose, mouth, and chin. When the user inhales, a negative pressure is created in the space between the user's face and the mask. If the mask fits properly, this creates a tight seal. Air purifying half mask respirators use filters that remove particulates from the air, cartridges that capture harmful gases, or a combination of both to protect the user. These respirators can be reused when properly cleaned, maintained, and stored. Workplaces may also use air purifying quarter masks, which cover less of the face than half masks do, or air purifying full masks, which cover the entire face. A power air purifying respirator, or PAPR, includes a face piece and a filter. A PAPR also includes a belt-mounted blower that forces purified air through the respirator's air purifying filters and or cartridges. When using a PAPR, it's important to monitor battery life closely. PAPRs are also available with loose-fitting face pieces, such as a hood. Air supplying respirators provide a source of clean, breathable air, regardless of the air surrounding the user. A hose delivers the fresh air from the source to the user. The source may be a supply tank placed outside the contaminated environment or a tank that the user carries. As a general rule, air supplying respirators are used in more hazardous atmospheric conditions than are the air purifying respirators. There are two different types of air supplying respirators. Airline respirators, self-contained breathing apparatus respirators. An airline respirator includes a pump, compressor, or tank of compressed air. The air supply is independent of the user and is left outside the contaminated area. A hose connects the air supply to a mask or hood the user wears. Airline respirators provide the user with clean air for long periods of time without added bulk and weight. However, the hose may limit range of movement. A self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBA, includes a clean air source that the user carries. The user generally carries the air in a tank mounted on his or her back. SCBAs also include a hose that transfers the clean air from the tank to the user's face mask. While SCBAs offer nearly unlimited mobility, they provide limited air supply with added equipment weight. They also require special training due to complicated operating procedures. Air supply respirators use one of two types of pressure regulators to supply air to the user demand regulators, and pressure demand regulators. A demand regulator senses a negative pressure within the mask when the user takes a breath and supplies air at that time. A pressure demand regulator always maintains a slight positive pressure within the user's mask. Pressure demand regulators consume more air than demand regulators do, but also reduce the chances of contaminants entering the mask. 
Choosing the right respirator for a job depends on three factors. The types of hazard in the workplace. The work conditions in which the respirator is worn. The way the respirator fits the user. Employers must provide respirators appropriate for the type of hazards their employees face and the work conditions in which the respirator is used. Workers and employers must work together to find a respirator that satisfies the first two requirements and that fits the worker properly. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, tests and approves respirators for use in the workplace. Any respirator or respirator filter used in the workplace must be approved for use by NIOSH. If NIOSH has approved a respirator or filter, it will be clearly marked with the letters NIOSH. Employers must assess the hazards in a workplace and then select a respirator that will reduce or eliminate the hazard to levels considered safe. To help employers do that, respirators are rated by an Assigned Protection Factor, or APF. The APF measures how much protection the respirator provides. The higher the APF, the more protection the respirator provides. For example, a respirator with an APF of 10 reduces the level of contaminants the user inhales by a factor of 10. A respirator with an APF of 100 reduces the level of contaminants by a factor of 100. The APF of a respirator depends on several factors, including the type of respirator, air purifying or air supplying, the type of mask, the type of filtering device used. The filters used in a respirator are rated by the level of protection they provide. There are three types of particulate filters, N, R, and P. N-type filters are not resistant to any oils, lubricants, cutting fluids, or glycerin in the environment. R-type filters are resistant to oils, lubricants, cutting fluids, or glycerin for only one work shift. Dispose of and replace N-type or R-type filters after every shift. The only time you should reuse these filters is when the manufacturer specifies differently or if there has been scientific testing showing they can be used longer. P-type filters are oil-proof for several shifts and can be worn until the filters become difficult to breathe through, become damaged, or are soiled. Each of the three filter types, N, R, and P, can be made with three different levels of filtering efficiency, 95%, 99%, and 99.97%, which is rounded off to 100%. Because there are three types of particulate filters, and each can be made with three levels of filtering efficiency, there are a total of nine possible particulate filters. Workers assigned to tasks that require a respirator must first undergo a medical evaluation to ensure they are physically able to wear a respirator that protects them from the hazards they'll face in their job. The medical evaluation should be set up by the employer and can be performed by a physician, a licensed healthcare professional, or through the use of a questionnaire, depending on what health and physical conditions are pertinent to the task assigned. The medical evaluator will assess respiratory and other potential problems while looking for facial scars or other features that could interfere with the respirator's fit and seal. The medical evaluation should be completed before an employee is fit tested for a respirator and before the employee uses a respirator on the job site. If a respirator does not fit correctly, it will not function properly leaving a worker unprotected from atmospheric hazards. Respirators with tight-fitting face masks should always create a seal against the user's face. 
In some cases, a particular style of face mask will not fit a user properly. When this happens, it's important to get another type of respirator that does fit. Your employer should provide you with a fit test to ensure that the make, model, style, and size of respirator you'll use on the job fits appropriately. A fit test should ensure that contaminated air will not leak in through the edges of your respirator. If one style or brand of respirator does not fit correctly, your employer will provide you with other models or sizes until a proper fit can be found. Once you've had a fit test for a respirator, your employer must retest the fit of your respirator at least once a year, anytime you use a different respirator, after any physical change that could affect the fit of your respirator, examples, facial scarring, dental changes, cosmetic surgery, obvious changes in weight. Some things to keep in mind regarding respirator fit include the size of your face, corrective eyeglasses, personal protective equipment, and respirator to face seal. It's important for the user's face to be clean shaved in the areas where the respirator directly touches the user's face. Facial hair that rests between the user's face and the respirator can interfere with the seal and put the user at risk of inhaling an airborne hazard. Corrective prescription eyeglasses can interfere with the seal of certain respirators. If you wear eyeglasses, wear a respirator that can create an effective seal while you wear your glasses. Personal protective equipment such as safety glasses or hard hats can interfere with a respirator's seal. If you're required to wear safety glasses on the job, you'll have to choose a respirator that creates a tight seal when you are wearing your safety glasses. If your job requires you to wear a hard hat, you should always put your respirator's elastic bands on under, not over, your hard hat. Make sure other PPE you wear on the job does not prevent your respirator from working properly. In addition to the yearly fit test you'll do with your employer, you should give your own respirator a field fit test every day. The type of check you do depends on the type of respirator you have. If you use an air purifying respirator that filters particulates from the air, you should perform a negative and positive pressure check every day. To perform a negative pressure test, use your hands to cover the respirator's filters from the outside. Then breathe in. Your respirator should collapse as shown in this image. If it does not, air is leaking in where the respirator should create a seal. To perform a positive pressure test, use your hand to cover the exhalation valve of the mask. Next, blow through your mouth and into the respirator. If the pressure builds up inside your respirator, the seal is working. If either or both of these tests fail, adjust your respirator until it fits properly. Then perform both tests again. Continue until your respirator passes both field fit tests. You should clean and sanitize your respirator on a regular basis to prevent germs from building up. Cleaning can involve using an antiseptic rub or soap and water, while sanitizing may involve the use of various sanitizing agents. Your company will train you on the best way to clean and sanitize your respirator.
It's also important to check each part of the respirator for damage or signs of wear. Inspect the face piece, the straps, and the valves, and any other part to make sure they work properly. Remember to check that the flexible rubber part of the face masks remains pliable so that it can create an effective seal. Be sure any defective, worn, or missing parts are replaced before you use your respirator. Replacements should always be made by the original equipment manufacturer for the exact model of respirator in use. If you use a respirator that includes filters, you should change the filters whenever breathing within the respirator becomes difficult or at any time the filters become damaged. You should also remember that N-type and R-type filters must be changed after every shift unless the manufacturer suggests differently. MSHA requires that respirators be cared for, cleaned, and maintained according to the standards established by the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. The ANSI standard requires that your company establish a maintenance program that ensures you have a clean and well-maintained respirator. Maintenance can be performed by you or another person specified by your company. Whoever performs these functions must be trained to do so by the company. When you're not using your respirator, store it in a way that prevents it from becoming damaged, deformed, or dirty. Keep it away from excessive heat or direct sunlight. You may want to store it inside a plastic Ziploc bag to help keep it clean. Writing your name on the plastic bag and on the respirator can help prevent confusion as to which respirator is yours. Remember to check the manufacturer's instructions before you mark on your respirator, however, as this may damage the respirator in some cases. If it is necessary to use a respirator at your workplace, your employer should provide you with the following training on respirators before you use the respirator. Why respirator use is necessary. Nature of the atmospheric hazards at your workplace. Reasons for selecting a particular type of respirator. Capabilities and limitations of the particular type of respirators you will use. How to determine appropriate respirator fit. How to inspect, put on, remove, and check the seals of your respirator. Respirator cleaning, maintenance, and storage requirements. How to use the respirator effectively under normal conditions, in emergency situations, and when the respirator malfunctions. How to recognize medical signs and symptoms that may limit or prevent the effective use of the respirator. Your employer may train you on additional topics concerning respirators as well. Although your employer should provide you with the proper respirator for your job, it is your responsibility to use your respirator when necessary to protect your own health. Remember to always wear your respirator in appropriate circumstances and to use it in a way that provides maximum protection.